Well, now federal government uh, representatives are meeting with Nigeria Labour Congress representatives at Aso Rock Villa in Abuja. The meeting began moments ago and is another series uh, to discuss the contentious petrol subsidy removal and price hikes. The NLC has steadfastly demanded that the government revert to the previous pump price of petrol before engaging in further negotiations in response. The NLC has announced plans for a nationwide strike this Wednesday. Union representatives also shunned a meeting on Sunday with the federal government. Well, for more on this, I'm being joined on the line from New York by Michael Prest. He's the founder of Petrodel Resources, an international oil and gas development and energy company. Michael Press, good to see you and thanks for your time. Uh, these are dire moments in Nigeria and uh, a time for us to reach out to experts like yourself uh, who better understand what the country has been going through. Uh, first of all, uh, let us understand what this talk about petrol subsidy is about. It looks like deja vu. Nigeria has been to, through this road before. Well, let me begin by thanking you for... Um inviting me to the studio to add a few comments to what is a very, I would say, a hot conversation currently. Um, the question you asked me is, um, what is the subsidy about, i.e., what is a subsidy? Well, I'm asked that question a lot of times, and I ask people to, um, we need to have an articulate conversation as regards to the position of the subsidy. We have a subsidy because, in essence, it's needed, I mean, in simple terms. What is currently wrong with the subsidy we have is that it's too expensive, and it has to change, both in terms of cost, but I would argue further than that, it also has to change in terms of structure. Um, when um, President Tinubu announced that the subsidy would be removed, he was right in what he said, in the, in the sense that we cannot go on with that type of subsidy. It's just no longer possible. That's the harsh reality. The question there is, then are, thereafter is, what do we do next? Yes, um, at the end of the day, the Nigerian public, their understanding of the oil market is basically the transport that they pay, the, um, the food that um, they have to um, buy, and also the petrol pump. So that's how they articulate the issue. They don't know the, uh, the fine points that be are behind that. And that's really the, the problem for, of government and for the likes of NMPC to, to better manage and to better articulate to the public. But the starting point, do, shall we continue with the current subsidy we have, the current level of subsidy? The answer is emphatically no, it just can't continue. Um, let me just give you a few numbers which put it into its proper context. The founding problem is this, and I, I stand to be corrected. Today, we do not have any accurate numbers on what we actually consume as a country called Nigeria. It could be, it could be anything between 30 million liters a day to 95 million liters a day. I mean, it's that wide. But in being that wide, the cost between the low point and the high point is anything from six to seven billion dollars. Now, you can imagine, if you can fine tune, better organize, better articulate what we actually consume and base that upon real numbers as opposed to this band of numbers that I'm constantly hearing, then we can better define what it is we can actually do. Um, labor unions, and I'm not in a position to, to speak on, on political matters, I'm just giving my view as, as a commercial person who knows something about the downstream oil business. Um, what I will say is this, more time needs to be spent on better understanding what it is we actually consume I mean, you can imagine between 30 million and 95, that's a huge difference. And the cost implications of that difference are enormous. From where I, from my vantage point, it seems to me that actually the subsidy that we actually have in place currently seems that we're subsidizing 
the whole of West Africa, maybe that's an exaggeration, but a large part of West Africa, whereas the consumption of Nigerians per se may well be one third, maybe half of that. But the implications of that half, as you can imagine, are enormous. Let me jump in here because uh, you, you, you've painted a, a very gloomy picture. First, I, I think for the first time in the history of Nigeria, we're getting to see experts like yourself saying what the government intends to do is something that uh, must be done. Uh, but again, we have to start pointing the numbers, which is one of the concerns you've raised. Uh, we need to know what we consume. Now, uh, as a player in the industry, is it so uh, such a difficult thing for us to put those numbers, uh, you know, down uh, so that people can understand what the nation consume. How difficult is it for us to, to gauge what we consume as a people? Well, you see, th this goes back to what I said in the beginning about having an articulate conversation. If you, I mean, modern times show you that if your data set is poor, then every action you take thereafter will equally be poor. That's just the way it is. We need to find out what is our consumption. Um, we, we need to understand um, what quantity of fuel, I mean really understand, not speculate or think or really understand what quantity of fuel doesn't stay within our borders. Yes, I understand we have accurate numbers in the context of trucks that are leaving depots, but we don't seem to, at least as far as I know, and please correct me if I'm wrong, we don't seem to have a definitive empirical position on where those trucks go. To that end, as I said, um, the consumption of Nigeria per se in terms of imported products should be anything between 30 million liters a day to 95 million. Even if you take the, the half point of that and you can focus on that half point, that is an enormous saving. And that enormous saving can then be used, can then be deployed for palliative measures that people are crying out for. Better, better road transport, as an example. Better railways. Um, government, if time is spent understanding and defining what is that point, then we can begin to move forward. I mean, I often hear this. I often hear, we've got to cut the subsidy. It's, it's an emotional, it's, it's almost becoming an emotional conversation. But you know, Emotions don't necessarily get you anywhere. What gets you somewhere are hardcore facts. And I think we have the capacity to, to better define what our consumption needs actually are. And again, I think it points to the fact that these are some of the key things that we should have as a people. If you say we all must sit down and have a conversation. Just a while ago, Labour uh, met with the government of Nigeria. Uh, and again, some industry experts like yourself. And it, some of the key questions people will be asking before they get to palliatives is to, first of all, uh, get the numbers which you, uh, you, you have raised and also see where uh, perhaps uh, the trillions of naira being paid uh, over the years uh, have been going through. Because you said uh, it looks as if Nigeria has been feeding the entire continent, uh, if you look at the numbers. Now, let's bring it back home. Uh, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't say... I no, no, you said it looks... I didn't say the entire uh, continent, no, no, I said West Africa. Uh, West Africa, okay, all right, okay, good. Now, now let's bring it back home. Yeah. For subsidy, for those who yeah. are now saying it the way you are, because uh, it got to a point, many Nigerians thought that subsidy was something uh, that never existed, something that was never there. Uh, but you saying uh, that it's something that yeah. the government must look towards, it then means that it does exist before now. No. no. Well, let's be clear. I mean, subsidy is being given a bad name because of the way we have a particular subsidy and it's been managed and operated. But subsidies exist throughout the world. I mean, in America, in Europe, in the United Kingdom. Last year, with the um, proliferation of the Ukraine-Russia war, there were subsidies. And, the, and what are subsidies for? Subsidies are there to protect the, the vulnerable. That's not my point. I, I, I mean, I don't have a problem with the the word subsidy per se, what I, I do have a problem with is the cost of the subsidy and how that cost seems to be ballooning year after year after year. I think if my, 
if my information is correct, in 2023, that figure may rise to about $16.2 billion. I mean, that's not sustainable. I recall a time where, and even at that time, I thought it was, uh, it was too high. NMPC was spending about, four, uh, I think it's 4% of its oil and gas sales to, um, to cover the subsidy. I think now it, it, it's about 80%. I mean, I stand to be corrected if I'm wrong, but either way, that's an exponential jump. And let, let, let's, let's look at the reality. Um, I don't believe if the numbers are looked at, we are driving any more than we used to drive three or f- uh, four, five, even 10 years ago. I'd be surprised. Um, our manufacturing base is, no long, is not greater than it was before. I'm not sure we're flying more than, it, than, we, were, um, than we did before. So what is accounting for this increase in uh, the numbers of the volume of what we import. I mean, it's not, it's not clear to me. Now, if there's an answer to that, and I don't know that fact, and somebody has those facts, then kindly share them. But I suspect, I suspect that it's been a, a sort of a flat line in terms of consumption, and yet we're importing more. Now, when you see something like that, you ask yourself a question. There is a systemic problem. Something has gone wrong. Now, dovetail back to the question that you asked me, and you asked me this. Many Nigerians feel that, you know, what was before, what is a subsidy, what was there before? I mean, subsidy is not necessarily a bad thing. What is unacceptable is the current form and the current cost of the subsidy. I mean, Nigeria PLC, if we're ever going to get anything right, we have to radically reduce the cost of any subsidy. And the reason why I say this, any subsidy, because let's just be very clear here. The oil price is something certainly Nigeria doesn't control. And I would actually argue nobody can control. It's a, it's a function of so many issues, all of which come into this melting pot and produce a price. So for example, Political shock, uh, demand and supply issues, economic woes, shipping, they all add up and they come up and they give you a final price. And that price is what you now translate back to the pump pump price. So I'm very wary of saying don't do something X, Y, Z, because if that something is not completely within your control, I mean, for example, The pump price is now 500 naira per litre. I'm just taking an average number. I mean, don't shoot me if I've got the the precise number wrongly, but it's about that now. Now, if we have any, you know, there any uh, one of, um, any one of political shocks around the world, which may or may not, which may or may not occur. Now, God forbid they occur and the price moves, you know, not because Nigeria has done anything wrong, but because of the demand supply equation, uh, and the fear of supply, let's say that price moves for whatever reason to six, seven hundred. Are we genuinely going to say that we're not going to step in to assist? All right, Michael, I mean, it, Michael, uh, Michael Prince, it, let, I, let me I, jump I, in here. I, I really have to cut you because I'm trying to pack this up before we go. Please. Uh, yeah, quickly now, uh, because I, I see the sense of what uh, you, you're saying. But again, uh, what are the fests? that the government should do to help the everyday Nigerian who uh, he's hard done or by or who's hit by the subsidy remover. Because we've seen a section of Nigerians who say, yes, I, I quite see the reason why the president should take off uh, subsidy, but not now. Uh, so are there things he should have done before taking this off? Well, I, I think the president is in a very difficult position because the abiding theme is that the subsidy must be um, uh, removed, it must be rethought, and it must be reshaped. That's a fact. I mean, you just cannot go on that way. Now, what's happening is that you have to have articulate conversations. And in having articulate conversations with all stakeholders, you will arrive, hopefully, at a midpoint that people begin to understand what is the downside of having a subsidy where you're paying $16 billion a year. Now, if you can reduce that by half, 
$8 billion and you can apply those $8 billion to other parts of the economy, transport, and in that way shift a subsidy or, an over, or payment on a subsidy to palliative measures, then you have a starting point. But you cannot, you cannot, and I keep stressing this same point, and I've been consistent for the past 10 years, you cannot keep fanning the fuels of a subsidy in terms of price. What you have to do, you have to go back and look at it very carefully. There are things that need to be changed and that can be changed with the right leadership and the right will. So for example, just one example, Nigeria is an oil producer, yet Nigeria is not a participant in the um, oil markets, in the, in the oil, mar oil trading markets. It's not really a participant. It's not a participant in the futures market. It's not a participant in issues such as price risk management. All those factors count because all those factors allow you to, at the end of the day, they give you tools to mitigate the final shock. We also, we don't have a strategic storage, as an example. I'm not saying that's the, the, that's the, that's the, um, the one-stop answer, but we also don't have that. So we need to think about around this carefully. This emotional conversation about cutting the subsidy, I get it completely because it's too expensive. And I'm in the camp that says, reform, reformulate, whatever word you, 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 you wish to choose, Let's look at it again, because at the end of the day, we have it within our power to resolve and find a solution. Best founder, Petrodal Resources, a fine place for us to say many thanks for being such a nice company.